Hello and welcome back to this course. In this session, we will explore the NVIC that is nested vector interrupt controller. So let's go to the reference manual. You can find this in the pre-read document or you can download it directly from the official website of ST. If you scroll down to the contents, you will find a section of interrupts and event at 10th chapter. This is the interrupts and event section. So just click on this and you will be redirected to interrupts and events page. NVIC is the part of the controller that manages all interrupts including the core exception. All the interrupts as well as the system exception are listed in a table called vector table. So let's understand what is vector table. It's a table of vectors. So what are vectors? We can relate this to the direction or if I'm talking in term of controllers, the direction can be compared with pointers. So vector table can be explained as table of addresses or pointers. What kind of addresses? So in NVIC, these addresses correspond to the exception handler. Exceptions here means the system exception plus interrupts. System exceptions are generated by the processor itself and whereas interrupts are external. So in simple words, vector table is nothing but addresses of exception handler. So let's explore the vector table. If you scroll down in the EXTI section, you'll find table number 38 that is vector table for STM32 F4 01 X B C STM32 F4 01 X D or E. So before we discuss about this table, this table contains six columns. So let's discuss the heading of this column. The very first is position. If you scroll down, you will say the position are empty for the system exception because the position of system exception are fixed. It comes from the processor end and who designed this processor? The processor is designed by ARM. Vendor has no any control over this. Now position with respect to what? So this is the position with respect to the NVIC engine and you can also say the position is as interrupt request number. So if you see for the window watchdog, the position is zero. That is the interrupt request number is zero. Next is priority. Priority defines the order of the interrupt that if multiple interrupts comes together, then which interrupt will be served first. So the order will be decided by this priority. If you see reset, reset has the highest priority among all the system exception as well as interrupts because it has priority minus three lower the priority number it denotes the highest priority of execution next is type of priority so if you see the reset nmi and hard fault these three exception have fixed type of priority that means we cannot change priority for these three exception because these are fixed by the processor and rest of them are settable. We need not to take much in concern the priority or the position because this can be settable or configurable. Next is acronym. It is the name given to the system exception or the interrupts. Next is description that is short summary for all these exception. And the last column is address. So addresses are the location where in the processor memory map we have to keep the address of corresponding exception handler. Handler is nothing but a C function that takes care of that particular exception. Suppose we have a, a window watchdog interrupt then we have to define a handler or a function that will take care this interrupt and the address for that handler will be saved in this particular address in the processor memory. If you scroll down further, you will see multiple number of interrupts for EXTI, for DMA, for timer, USART, SPI and lots more. Okay, so now let's understand how a GPIO pin 
can interrupt the processor because this is an external interrupt and it is handled by the vendor like we are discussing about the controllers manufactured by ST that is based on the processor developed by ARM so we need to see how GPIO can interrupt the processor because if you look in this vector table you won't find any mark of GPIO listed in any of the column so we need to understand how a particular GPIO can interrupt the processor the reason is through EXTA line EXTI stand for external interrupt controller if you scroll down further you will go to the EXTI section this is the block diagram of external interrupt so as you can see in the block diagram that whatever interrupt is coming from input line and passing through the various resistor configuration it is finally going to the NVIC that is NVIC engine if you scroll down further so we have to look in this section external interrupt or event line mapping this is the root cause for performing GPIO as external interrupt as you can see up to 81 GPIO are connected to the 16 external interrupt or event line in the following manner so the 0th pin of all the GPIO ports like PA0, PB0, PC0, PD0, PE0, PH0 are connected to external interrupt line 0 via multiplexer and out of these pins which one will be connected to external interrupt line that will be configured by this configuration resistor similarly first pin of all GPIO ports that is PA1, PB1, PC1, PD1, PE1, PH1 is connected to external interrupt line 1 via multiplexer similarly we have 16 such lines starting from EXTI 0 to EXTI 15 if you look at this block diagram you will see that there are 23 lines for external interrupt that is configured in NVIC interrupt controller so these are the external interrupt line connected to this GPI pins and 5 other EXTI lines are connected as follows like 16, 17, 18, 21, 22 external input line is connected to PVD output, RTC alarm event USB OTG full speed wake up event, RTC tamper and timestamp event, RTC wake up event. So these cannot directly hit to NVIC engine for its interrupt request. They connect to the NVIC engine using EXTI lines. So that's all for this session. In the next session, we'll configure the user button connected on the board as an external interrupt and we'll control the LED based on interrupt request. So see you in the next lecture. Thank you.